Hey guys, Valky here. By the time you guys are watching this video, there should be a custom Mystic Summon banner live. Since Moonlight 5 stars are some of the rarest units in the game, this is an excellent opportunity to catch up to players who uh, already own a lot of these units. As the meta changed quite a lot in the past few patches leading up to the E7 WC, I want to make an updated version to the E7 WC patch. So do keep in mind this list will be geared specifically towards how valuable these units are to a newer player. Since I'm assuming if you're an experienced player, you don't need my opinion on what unit to summon or what not to get. If you want a more in-depth RTA tier list in general for an experienced player, I will be making another video later this week for the E7WC patch. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe up. Since this is all Moonlight units, which are 95% all PVP specialists, this list will cover roughly their usage in Arena and Guild Wars, as well as RTA, which will still be the main focus of what I'm talking about here. Now that we've got that out of the way, here's a list. So to make it very clear, if a unit is above this imaginary line I'm drawing on my screen right now, I think they're worth a pity. If they're below this very same line I'm drawing right now, I don't think they're worth a pity on Mystic Banner, which takes 200 summons to reach. So in the top tier, there are only two units. These units are so good, they can win the game by themselves, and you literally just have to give them a few stickmans and dog near them, and they can still win. Blood Moon Haze specifically, after his buff, is every unit's father. And if you watched the E7WC Korean regionals, in that server build entire team compositions around how much damage Death Dealer Ray can pack just through his debuffs alone. And since E7 at the highest level plays a lot more like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, more so than something like, I don't know, like chess or League of Legends as a sport, right? Blood Moon Haste is essentially the equivalent of the strongest card they printed this set. So most drafts will either ban him outright or design to be played with him or have everything designed to play against him. And right now it really is the closest thing to being a must have unit in any PVP content at this moment. And in the second tier, these are some of the strongest units in the game, but with a catch, you either need another specific unit, a specific condition or a specific artifact for them to be as strong as the units up top here. So here's an example. Zeo is through his passive, basically the fastest unit in the game. You can think about him like that but he really isn't all that strong. Being fast isn't that good unless you also have Requiem Rolana or Eternal Wanderer Ludwig to pair with him. Another good example here is Dragon King Sharoon, who has the biggest variance in power level where she's normally a very average unit, except for when she's up against Death Dealer Ray compositions, where suddenly she is able to counter his sleep debuff, making her instantly a better unit and her class debuff being extremely strong because Death Dealer Ray is usually drafted with other knights and now they're eating defense breaks and getting popped by any DPS unit. Another example is Strays, which you don't really see up there all that often in terms of power level with some of these guys. But if you get Benny Maru's Tachi on him, you can instantly delete the Blood Moon Haste, delete Dragon Bryce Senya, delete Laia. That is a very strong tool in Arena and in Guild War. These are some of the most problematic units, very hard to remove once they hit the board and Strays can just remove that before they can act. All you need is either the limited artifact Benny Maru's Tachi or a way to give him an attack buff. On top of that, he regularly makes appearances in Hunt one shots or even Avin Side Story as a nice one shot unit, giving any player who owns him a fast way to clear those contents. So super valuable here, even though he's not as strong as some of the rest of these units. Any unit above this point so far is worth a pity. Now once you go beneath this line, this is where I think specifically this tier in the middle right here is where I think units might be worth a pity. Okay, they, they might be worth a pity. They're not so strong, you're like, all right, 200 summons down to go in for them. But they're also not so weak. Like they're very reliable in the ways they work, but maybe there are just better answers. We'll go over a few one of them that really matter. The first one that stands out is Specimen Says. He popped off right after his buff the beginning of the year, but very quickly fell off because this Genua character was released and very quickly replaced him for most players, including myself. But now that players are adapting to ban Genua, realizing how OP that character is, 
Specimen says is slowly coming back as a force that must be respected. I'm sure if you watch some WC, you've seen him pop off in his fair share of games. Arbiter Vildred. It's a very new, interesting addition since his exclusive equipment gives him a unique buff with evasion and attack. And we all witnessed how some units can instantly pop off if you just randomly give them evasion, like Specimen says. Oh wow, what a surprise. So Arbiter Vildred's value comes from the fact that when you draft him, he's relatively neutral, which means he is very hard to punish because you can hide your build and your strategy from your opponent. Since you can build him full damage, you can build him with counter as a bruiser, or you can even build him lifesteal with double-edged decrescent as the way to enable his counter attacks. So he could be played many ways and it keeps your opponents guessing what he does. And either way, as long as his revive isn't being denied, he is going to be able to come back and give you a whole lot of value with his damage. Uh, some units are very deadly in RTA because of how much they can mix up your opponent. For example, Fire Politus, multiple builds, all very strong and all very dangerous. And it leads your opponents into bad drafts and bad strategic decisions, assuming that they assume your build incorrectly. And the buffed RB falls right into that lane. Another really notable pick here is Sylvan Sage Vivian. She caught a buff that really put her back on the map. She's still very vulnerable to the units like Solitaria or Sea Phantom Politus, who can deny her focus, but when her focus is full, she is completely immune to debuffs, which means she's immune to steel, she's immune to sleeps and venoms, and it makes her extremely strong versus some of these compositions like with the Ray, with Knock Wool that you see where people just pick a lot of debuffs and they overload you with debuffs and just try to stall you out. Sylvan Sage Vivian is mostly immune to that. In the current meta, she's still relatively weak to additional damage, which is made more prevalent now thanks to 3F, enabling units like Albedo, but also Dragon Brysenia, on top of all of her old counters like Karina and a bit of Requiem Roana as well. So having her as a pocket pick could help you, but I can't tell you that's worth a pity in my eyes. Following that, these are the four tier units. These are just fun units that all have a strong purpose. For example, top model Luluka, you could build decently fast, pop a unit, attack buff your team. She could kind of do a bit of everything, but because of how strong some of the faster units are, specifically like ML Luna, C Phantom Polly, right? Rampayra made a strong comeback this meta. You're not going to be able to see her very often, but in the games where she does get played, she'll look really fun. Same thing with Remnant Violet, fun character. Make Chloe as well. That's still a character a lot of players construct a huge part of their strategy around, having her be this AoE passive effect resistance bot, letting her buff up all of their characters. Still playable strategy, but not something I would recommend if you are wondering if it's worth a pity and if you're a newer player. And finally, the last tier, honestly, for me, this is where units are just too hard to play or they take too much gear for what's essentially you can get better results with easier to gear characters. I actually think Faithless Lydica is quite strong, but she's so hard to gear. I don't think it's worth your time. The same kind of extends to Operator Sigra, who not only needs good damage gear, but Guiding Light. And I mean, this guy, you guys already know, I don't have to talk about this guy. So yeah. And then the units that's left over on the bottom are simply too new. They're not within the selection period, so they're not available to pick up on this banner. But if you're watching this a little bit later and you're wondering if they're strong, here's where I would plug them in on the list. New Moon Luna, I would actually say is right around Zeo's power level, just below that top, top, top tier unit that newer or maybe inexperienced players will want. If you already have an established account and you have all the combo pieces for her, you know, like the Roana, like the Ludwig, Ida, I actually think she's right up here. But if you don't have these other pieces, I would say her power level is like comparable to Zeo at best. Yeah, you can go really fast and you can put down a lot of debuffs, but then what? right? You, you don't have the combos to play. Following that, Dragon Brysenia is a character that, whew, putting her up here, very easy. She can tank, she can cleanse, she can protect a carry, nuke a unit, and then after that, nuke the entire enemy team, all the while being extremely tanky and tough to kill. Makes her an easy top tier for new players for me. She does everything you want in a strategy game besides drop debuffs. Simple as that. See Phantom Politus, I would actually put up here with the rest of these guys. Unlike Luna, who needs specific units to pop off and be brought to her full potential, while Sea Phantom Politus does like to be paired with her enraged 
huge enablers like a Taiwan Genua, the fact that she brings the highest attack TMA for reliable dual attack, I think is nuts. Not only is it going to make your PVP really strong, she's also going to be usable for PVE sometimes. Pair that with the fact that she also has access to these defense break artifacts as a ranger. This makes her a top tier pickup for any newer player in any skill bracket, in my opinion. So as my two cents on what I think is a must have in today's game, what's worth a mystic pity, and of course is more skewed towards a newer casual player's perspective. If you're trying to power up PVP, if you just have a unit that you want to pick up already in mind, you don't even have to ask me, man, fuck everything I said, follow your my guy, pick up whatever character you think you want to get, right? That, that That's the main thing. Pick up a unit that you think you could have fun with. After all, you know, I say this all the time, but it's a video game. Have fun, live a little, right? If you're here for a more RTA focused tier list, I will be making one that later this week, specifically if you want to catch up to the game and watch E7WC and, you know, check off a list on how well or poorly these players are adapting. Furthermore, if you ever gotten lost following in, or at least trying to follow an RTA stream and you hear terms like tempo, bridge, aggro, stabilize, I'll be releasing a guide after that next video to talk about these terms. So make sure you're subbed and belled up for when the video goes live. And you know, down there in the comments, if you guys have a term that you like to explain in a video by a top RTA player, hey, let me know. That said, that's all I got for you guys in this video. See you guys in the next one. Stay safe out there. See you, see ya.